and welcome to the debrief from the business of fashion, where each week we go deep on our most popular BOF professional stories with the correspondents who created them. I'm Lauren Sherman. Every spring, top fashion clients, influencers, and insiders are whisked away to far off destinations for resort runway shows, where they attend fabulous dinners and get a sneak peek of these unique collections. But what exactly is resort wear, and why is it such an important category for the fashion industry? Today, I'm joined by BOF correspondent Tamison O'Connor, who covers luxury for us out of London. Tammy, you've become our de facto expert on this subject. To start, can you explain exactly what is resort wear? Of course. Simply put, as we're talking about it, clothes for vacation. And that's actually where the idea of pre-seasons came from when luxury houses started doing cruise and resort collections halfway through the main season to cater to clients that traveled. What's interesting is how retailers are thinking about the category today. Once upon a time, you go to a department store and and vacation would be a selection of swimwear and beach cover-ups on the lingerie floor. But now it really encompasses a whole look. And for some multi-brand retailers can also really help to drive meaningful sales. So yeah, vacation dressings become a significant business, I think, for retailers, but also brands, especially e-tailers like Matches and and My Teresa. They don't have to worry about shop floor space so much, so they can sell this all year round. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got an email this weekend from, I want to say, Netta Porter saying something like, here's your vacation ready gear and just having all these different categories. So you mentioned that it's more than just swimwear or caftans or what have you. What do these collections encompass? I think the idea of holiday is really an escape from your routine and a chance to have new experiences and maybe be a bit frivolous and and lighthearted and carefree. And I think that designs kind of tend to reflect that more in, in your kind of vacation wear collections, lots of color, lots of prints, a bit more floaty, a bit more bohemian, maybe in the cut. And fabrics, you know, they tend to be lighter as well when you're talking about ready to wear. So perhaps cottons and linens or for a bag, you know, in a canvas or a wicker. But because of that, then the price point's also a bit lower than the mainline collection. So they tend to be more accessible. I mean, taking Loewe as an example, you can buy a basket bag for like 400 quid. That's much cheaper than the £2,000 puzzle bag in leather from the mainline collection. So I think that that is why it's such an interesting category because it's really attractive for the true luxury customer who sees these items as a fun way to accessorize a holiday. But it's also an entry point for more aspirational and, and younger consumers as well. And I think that that bang for your buck aspect is quite important there as well, because it's very versatile. You know, this dress can work for the beach, but it can also work for summer in the city. And it's interesting because throughout my reporting, everyone was saying how popular dresses were as a category. And I think that that's probably why you see clothing and apparel really driving a lot of the growth in this market, because People are investing for a nice dress for a holiday, but also able to wear it in the summer, in the heat wave, in the city. Loewe is an interesting example here. They essentially created a capsule collection within their main collection called Paula's Ibiza. Based on that's a restaurant there or a, or a club or something? It was a boutique in Ibiza. And yeah, it was a collaboration they did, I think, in 2017. But then a couple years back, Loewe actually acquired the trademark and the archives to really build out Paula's Ibiza as a robust offering. And yeah, I think Robert termed it a brand within a brand. But again, it seems to perform really, really well. And there's a department store in London, Liberty, that have just started stocking it. And they've taken over the whole of the kind of ground floor atrium to build this kind of Spanish style villa in the middle of the department store to promote the collection and because it's just been so popular for them. So what do you think is driving the boom in the market right now? People have been going on holiday for years, obviously for two years they didn't, but (laughs) do you think that is a big part of it, this pent up demand thing that everyone's talking about? A hundred percent. I think that's kind of the overarching theme that people are just desperate to travel again. And I think there's also a real sense of treating yourself. I haven't been on a big vacation in two years. 
So what better time than now to refresh my holiday wardrobe and spend a little bit more because I can, because I need to seize these opportunities. I think there's also a lifestyle factor as well that, you know, there's the normalization of remote working which means you can kind of decamp to, I don't know, Tuscany or the Hamptons or Miami for an extended vacation or permanently. And so that's also an attractive shift that's happened for this market. And I also think weddings as well. So many weddings are happening this year. A lot are happening abroad, especially among the luxury consumer we're talking about. And it's become a really important purchasing occasion for a lot of customers at the moment. And so that kind of crossover between destination wedding, wedding guest attire, I think that that's also helping a surge that we're going to see this summer. You mentioned that this is a big thing for retail. It's a big thing for brands, but retailers as well, as well as brands who are retailers. So can you just talk about some of the different things that brands and retailers are doing at their stores to get people excited about this stuff? Totally. Well, like the example I just gave about Liberty, that pop-up isn't just building an impressive villa in the middle of a London department store. They're also doing cocktails and DJ nights. And I think you can get Luerve manicures as well. And so to really bring people in and get them excited. Matches Fashion has just launched their grand tour of Italy, which they partnered with a very shishi hotel group, Pelicano Hotels, to host parties and shopping pop-ups across like different holiday destinations in Italy. My Teresa, they do a lot of events for their top clients. They just did one with Dolce & Gabbana in Miami, bringing the Italian spirit and taking over, I think it was the Standard Hotel with the lemon prints. And and you mentioned Netta Porter. They've also done something this summer. They've done these like city guides. I think that's quite clever because the pandemic, a lot has changed. I think there's been a lot of, of, of shift in a lot of cities in terms of like restaurants and things to do beyond the site. So they've kind of created these up-to-date city guides telling you where to stay, what to see and what to wear to each occasion. So this is a big opportunity for retailers. A lot of them call it high summer and then have different sections throughout the summer where they'll have different marketing moments for different peaks in the season for different occasions. And many big brands are opening more stores in these vacation towns, right? A hundred percent. Ultimately, there's just a really big opportunity to cater to a captive audience, plenty of time to shop whilst on holiday while they're vacationing. And I guess, you know, when you're in Saint-Tropez, what more do you want than to look like you're holidaying in Saint-Tropez? So you just go to the shop and buy what you want to wear while you're there. So yeah, brands are doubling down on stores and pop-ups in all kinds of like vacation hotspots. So Saint-Tropez, Capri, Marbella, even Bodrum in Turkey, Bali. You see Dior is really expanding its Dior Riviera pop-ups this year as well. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Imran Ahmed, founder and CEO of The Business of Fashion. When I first started writing BOF, it was out of pure passion for this industry and with an eye to how the disruptive forces of digitization, globalization, and consumer shifts would change the way fashion works. 15 years later, we are well on our way to helping to define the fashion business of the future. As I travel the world, some of you ask me what's the best way to support BOF as we continue to act as your guide during these turbulent times. The best way to support BOF is to support our journalism by joining BOF Professional, the largest community of fashion professionals in the world. A BOF Professional membership gives you access to our agenda-setting insights and analysis, which you won't find anywhere else plus the opportunity to learn from our talented team of correspondents and editors, as well as our wider network of the fashion industry's leading creatives, thinkers, and futurists. Follow the link in the episode notes to learn more. Talking about the big brands, they also, at this time of year, they host these big resort runway shows, mostly for clients, but also for editors and for social media influencers. And it's a big party. I think Chanel did one on Monte Carlo last week. It seemed a little dreary and rainy. And this week in San Diego, Louis Vuitton is doing a show. I'm going to get to go to that. Fingers crossed. Nothing happens before then. And then next Monday, Gucci showing in Italy as well. And you actually went to Capri 
for Poochie, which they haven't done something like that in probably years, if ever. Can you talk a bit about what's happening with Poochie, that brand, and and what your experience was like? So Poochie, it was a three-day experience. To be honest, it felt like an extended family holiday or a wedding or something. It was really, really amazing. It was kind of industry people, influencers, top clients all came to Capri to mark the debut collection for Camille Michelli, who used to do accessories for LVMH's other top, top brands, Vuitton and Dior. Now she's at Pucci. I mean, it kind of marks a relaunch of sorts for the brand. It's a totally new strategy, just really rooted in going back to Pucci's origins as a resort wear brand. So that's where the kind of experience came into because it meant really leaning into the lifestyle of that jet set glamour. And so instead of doing a traditional show, which I think Camille felt was not right for a brand like Pucci, it was all about showcasing the lifestyle and seeing the clothes in action, as it were. And then on the business side as well, she's introduced See Now Buy Now. She's leaning into e-commerce. So they've relaunched the website, but also partnered with My Teresa. And so that's kind of one side of the retail strategy. And then the other side of the retail strategy is brick and mortar in the Shishi resort spots like Capri, Saint-Tropez, Miami, etc. So I think it's a really new chapter for the brand, which is quite exciting. And it was wonderful to be able to go and see the new collection can be really put in a lot of thought, I think, into the merchandising of the collection. And she reintroduced six prints from the archive that were all distinctive, but all worked together. And because Capri is like such a small island and you could just kind of see Pucci kind of popping up everywhere on the island. It, it was great for social media. And there were dresses that kind of went from beach to party. You just like swap out your sandals for your heels. You know, some were wearing a little Pucci scarf. Others were wearing a head to toe look. There was lunch on a beach where all of the models were wearing the Pucci swimsuits. And it was really, really fun. And it was really clever, I think, for a brand like Pucci, which isn't necessarily a huge brand that would attract an international presence for it if they were to do a destination show. But I think the idea was for it to feel more engaging and more authentically lifestyle as a brand. The timing couldn't be better to relaunch a brand like Pucci, which is so iconic, so well known, but hasn't really had a presence. And doing a traditional runway show in the fall for even spring, that wouldn't have felt exciting in any way. But Pucci is known for printed caftans and bathing suits and swim and beach. And so that makes a lot of sense. And and it seems like the timing is just right. So the last week, week and a half, we've seen a lot of news coming through about global economy difficulties, especially in China, where travel still isn't where it was. Even domestic travel is limited because of all these outbreaks. There's zero COVID policy, et cetera, et cetera. In the U.S., where a colleague mentioned that American Airlines was something like it was their biggest booking month ever. Everybody's traveling. Everybody's out and about. But Inflation is skyrocketing, everything's super expensive, way more than it typically is. What are your predictions for this market? Do you think that people are going to want to spend money on travel no matter what because they can now? And so therefore, if they are going to buy clothes or accessories or what have you, it's going to be around vacation? Or do you think that this market is at its peak and that it will slow down a bit if the economy keeps moving in the direction that it is? When we're talking about this luxury resort wear market, as we saw over the pandemic, luxury has a resilience that the general market doesn't tend to have. I think as well, we also saw that the luxury consumer, their spending power was not curbed really at all by COVID. And the thing about the vacation market is that it's a way for brands to really tap into more domestically wealthy clients rather than traveling clients, even though like traveling within Europe, say. And everyone I spoke to for my story said they also don't see this as a short-term spike, but it's a market that they see is going to probably continue to grow, especially as it just becomes more full with more ready-to-wear footwear accessories in terms of, you know, bags, jewelry. And that versatility element I was talking about earlier means that for, 
your luxury consumer and your regular consumer, if you're going to buy a basket bag from Luerve, you can still wear that in the city. You can take it on holiday. You're going to get more bang for your buck. So I think the market will probably pick up really where it left off as we went into COVID. I think the other thing that will be interesting to watch is the winter resort wear market. We've started to see a lot more luxury brands and retailers really lean into ski wear. Again, really targeting that true luxury customer who probably has a chalet in Courcheval or Verbier and wants to look super fashionable on the slopes. And brands like Chanel have long had ski collections, but we've seen like Chloe and Balmain through collaborations lean more into the technical ski wear and the apres ski. So I think that that's also going to become a compliment. I have a feeling as well, we'll probably see something like that coming from Pucci in the future as well. It's so funny to think at the height of the pandemic, everybody sort of thought, oh, we're never going to travel like we used to. And it's come roaring back. (laughs) Very wrong prediction. Tammy, thank you so much for being here. It was so great to catch up. Oh, thank you for having me. What a fun conversation. Thanks, Lauren. So fun. Have a great day. Tammy's story is called Luxury Seizes the Vacation Dressing Boom. It's accessible through your BOF professional membership, so be sure to check it out. You've been listening to The Debrief, produced and edited by Emma Clark, Kate Barton, and Eric Bria in the BOF studio. I'm Lauren Sherman, and I'll be back next Wednesday with a new episode. Thank you so much for joining us, and be sure to follow us wherever you get your podcasts. You can join BOF Professional today with an exclusive 25% discount on an annual membership covering key industry topics from sustainability to technology to marketing with access to our case studies, live events, and iOS app. To get this special offer and benefit from 25% off of a membership, head to the link in the episode show notes or enter the coupon code DEBRIEF at checkout. Visit businessoffashion.com slash memberships.